I'm so glad we decided to get Johnny that new trombone. Everyone at the club says he's going to be the next Tommy Dorsey. He really has taken to it, hasn't he? He even asked me to buy a new gospel LP today. What was the title? Something about the Sabbath? <laughs> What was that wretched sound? It must be the hi-fi. I hope Johnny didn't break it putting on his new album. Go check on that boy! Now, Johnny's parents there were sure worried about the type of music he was playing on his trombone. Now, I'm of the opinion that just because we play an instrument that is most commonly associated with maybe playing in an orchestra or playing in a jazz band or something like that, that we can actually be pretty expansive with the type of music that we play. And one of the ways that we can achieve these kind of different sounds is by getting into kind of the world of playing with some effects pedals. This is not something that is always done by all brass players. You know, maybe we think this is something that is more for like guitar players or producers, but we can certainly get into this realm as brass players. And in today's lesson, we're gonna talk about some practical ways you can get started on working on this part of your musicianship. The first question might be, well, Sean, why do I do this? Why do I need to take the time and the money to learn about this area? Number one, it's fun. I guarantee you, if you've never played with any kind of effects pedals or anything like that before, the first time you do, um, it's going to be fun just because you can create a lot of different sounds and it can really change what you thought you could do on your instrument. And so that's reason number one. And if that's the only reason that you need, go for it because it definitely is something that can add an extra element of kind of just enjoyment to your playing. Now, the bigger reason for me, beside it just being fun, is that a lot of the music that was really influential to me when I was kind of coming of age in my late teens and early 20s that I really enjoyed had some elements of this sort of affected process sound. Two albums that really stick out for me or two artists are Roy Hargrove and Joshua Redman. Um, I am 36 years old now and so I was coming of age in the early to mid 2000s and during that time period, Roy Hargrove uh, released several of his RH Factor albums and Joshua Redman released the album Elastic. These were two of the most influential artists for me at the time and specifically the album Elastic just left an incredibly large imprint on me and I think on a lot of other jazz musicians of my generation. And those sounds that he was able to achieve on that album um, were created by using effects pedals. And so that has just become part of my kind of musical language. And when I play my own stuff, kind of like my compositions, my bands, um, for the last six or eight years, I've kind of used this as, as part of what I do in those type of bands. Now, certainly this is nothing new. People have been using effects on their horns since the 60s or 70s. Um, but I definitely think there's been a resurgence of interest in this over the last maybe 15 or so years um, as kind of millennials have become more adult musicians. All right, we are gonna get into some actual sounds today, um, but first let's talk just a little bit about what my setup is. Um, every time I post kind of like an effects video on Instagram or anything like that, I always get a couple of people asking me like, what's my setup? And I use a pretty simple, modest setup. So um, check it out over here. I've got what I use. Um, let's start with kind of the signal path here. I go into my microphone. Uh, I play on a Sennheiser 421 for live shows. I think it's a really great live mic, sounds great on trombone. Um, it is a dynamic microphone. For the type of setup we're gonna talk about today, that's probably gonna be your best choice, but you can use other type of microphones. It just might mean a little bit of additional hardware that you might need to purchase or a slightly different setup. So I go in for my dynamic microphone and that short little cable you see is an impedance changer. That takes my low impedance microphone signal from the XLR cable and shifts it into a higher impedance signal that the effects board is going to like a little bit more, more like a guitar signal. It also gets me from my XLR to my quarter inch. And I just go straight into my effects pedal. No preamp, no anything like that. And that's because I'm using a dynamic microphone. And this particular effects pedal I'm using has a pretty good clean sound. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So from there, I go into my board and I'm using a Line 6 Firehoff FX. This is in all honesty, a board that was released several years ago, and they have some newer models out that have some extra features, but this is a great option for me. 
Um, it has lots of options. And the thing that I really love about this, it has a lot of real-time controls you can do either on a tablet or a phone. That was important in the last upgrade I made because I didn't wanna be kinda of like stuck in a bunch of sub-menus when I was trying to tweak sounds live. Now, I use a multi-effects processor. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the second installment of these lessons. There'll be one this week and one next week. Um, but I'm using a multi effects processor here. If you're using individual stomp boxes, or even if you're running maybe into your computer and you use an Ableton, um, there are you know similar options or the same options that you can do. This is just a setup that works for me. And then from my uh, board, I go right out to um, a small mixer and a powered speaker that I practice with at home. I would really recommend using a full range speaker like a monitor as compared to a guitar amp. That's gonna give you the most kind of like clean signal or clean sound. Or if I'm playing a gig, I just go right out of the DI that is actually in this pedal board right to the sound person. Um, this pedal board has a pretty clean sounding direct out. Um, it sounds pretty natural. It doesn't do anything strange to the signal. It's pretty quiet. And so it really works well for me. Again, that was really important when I, last time I upgraded my gear was to think about, I need to have a really easy way to get a good clean signal out of my board. Now, if you're using a different setup, you might need to buy what's called a preamp. Um, and that's gonna be like a separate pedal that allows you to get in your mic signal, go into your effects loop, and then get out again to the board. Um, one a lot of people use is the Voco Loco. Um, I have not worked with that area as much because I use a multi-effects pedal, so I don't necessarily need a separate preamp. All right, before we get into the kind of sounds I'm able to create with this, let's hear a little bit of my clean sound just so you can see what that is. Now, all the sounds I'm gonna play for you here, I am gonna do as little kind of post-production processing as I can on these, just so you can really hear what they're sounding like coming out of the board. I might do just a tiny bit of EQing. I might add just a little bit more reverb if it's necessary, but um, I already have some reverb baked into most of my kind of sounds, so I may not need to. So you're hopefully getting the real like authentic representation of what these sounds are. So here's my clean sound, um, just right out of the board with uh, no effects on it. Right, the first kind of category of kind of pedals we're going to talk about is harmonizers. This is one of the first things that most um, wind instrumentalists use, and they sound great um, on this type of instrument. Some of these uh, different types of pedals you're going to find sound better or worse on a wind instrument. Remember, these are mostly guitar um, pedals, and so they're going to have to be tweaked a little bit to make them work for us. So with this harmonizer, we have a lot of options of going an octave up, an octave down, providing different harmony, and depending on what individual type of pedal you're using, you're gonna have a lot of options. The things that I really love the most um, are actually going down an octave. I tend to find that that is the most useful sound. When we go up an octave, sometimes the sound can get a little bit thin. It is useful in some situations, but that octave down, it really just adds some nice beef to the sound um, and it is a great sound to use as a soloist or actually in the section as well. Let's check out a few examples of what this might sound like. Okay, on that first example, um, you heard just kind of like the clean sound with the octave down. The biggest knob that you're gonna to wanna to think about adjusting on this one is the mix knob. Once you've kind of settled on what interval you want to transpose by, if you set the mix knob really high, it's gonna give all of the uh, process signal. So if you set it up an octave and you set your mix knob like all the way to 100% essentially, you're gonna get nothing but the process signal. Whereas if you set it very, very low, you're gonna get very little of the process signal. I tend to like the mix to be about maybe like 10 to 11 o'clock, um, so just a little bit less than 50%, sometimes a little more than 50%. Um, I find that when you have it a little less than 50%, you still hear that effect really clear, but you get enough of your natural sound that you still get good punch and clarity. Sometimes these octave pedals can kind of take some of that off. Let's hear what this would sound with a little bit less of my original sound and a little bit more of my original sound in the mix. <laughs> All right, the final thing to think about with 
harmonizer pedals is that they can play really great with some of the other effects that we can use. So let's check out what that sounds like. First, we're gonna hear it with um, an overdrive. I'm actually using an amp modeling um, pedal that, that's within this board to uh, create this, but there are lots of different overdrives and distortion options. Um, we'll hear that. And then secondly, we'll hear it with the so-called auto wah filter, which is like an envelope filter. That's that uh, wah sound that we're, you know, most of us are familiar with on the instrument. So we're gonna do both of these an octave down um, the overdrive also has a little bit of an octave up, so it has actually two transpositions. That just helps kind of broaden out the sound. So let's check out what this sounds like. All right, there you have it. That's lesson one on what I like to do with my pedal options. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe, um, hit the like button, leave a comment about any questions you have about kind of like trombone pedal stuff. Um, this is a big topic, and I hope this video will be a good resource for people getting started in this area. So we'll see you next week for part two, where we cover some of the other sounds that we can create um, using these tools.